So, Morrissey, it's good to meet you. Why? Um, because I've been campaigning for you all day, and I've been getting quite excited on your behalf. I see. Well, then, that's, that's nice. How do you Very feel nice. about being one of our living icons? I feel surprised. Really? Very surprised, yes, because I think I'm generally held in with such uh, suspicious regard by the media. But not by the public, then? No, but when the public are allowed to choose for themselves without having certain things thrust upon them, like playlists, etc., something different happens. Because you're one of our top three out of hundreds of people who are nominated. It's extraordinary. And it's extraordinary. why do you think the British public like you so much? Well, it's not really for me to say. I, don't, I, I can only guess, but uh, you'd have to ask the people who, who voted, really. But uh, I think people uh, consider me not to be institutionalised, and that's very important to many people. And uh, many people consider me to be a propelling force. And... Um, but really, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think a lot of people have a real love for you. I and mean, speaking to people on the streets today, mm. a lot of people felt that you kind of articulated what they felt, that maybe you were one of the first pop stars who actually spoke about how real people felt. I think that was true. And I think um, uh, I, I've always tried to be true, and I've always tried to be real. And um, you, you'll never see me on the Brit Awards and rubbish like that. So... Uh, I, I think I, I certainly stand apart, but when, when I begin to talk about these things, it, it can sound a bit like chest beating, and it can become a little bit embarrassing. But that's what it's about. I, I'm chest beating for you. You don't need yes, to chest beat because I'm doing it. your chest, which is okay. Which <laughs> yeah, is no, okay. I, I won't beat your chest. No, thank no, you. That would get me into trouble. Thank you. But um, quite a few girls on the street said you were quite fit. I'm not disagreeing. Did you, but, um, did you, did you dare question? But you've got a lot question? of female fans out there, then. Well, why are you surprised? I, I'm, I'm wondering if... if I, I think you're probably equally voted for by men and women, because I think men love mm. the way you speak about, you know, being an anguished young man in love and mm. sort of talking about how people actually felt when they were young. And I think mm. a lot of girls mm. fancy you. It's a peculiar world. It's a peculiar world. But once again, it's not something I can answer. But there's obviously a lot of affection for you from the public. Mm -hmm. Is that mutual? Do you feel affectionate for the British public? Extraordinary, yes, because it's been a long time. I'm still here, and I'm still very committed. And uh, so, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it, for me, it's the, the affection is, uh, is fantastic. And icon is a, a strange word, I guess. Um, it's a peculiar word. It's, it, I think it's overused these days, to, to, to be quite frank. Every, you know, everybody seems to be an icon. Um, but, uh, but have you aimed to be iconic? A lot, a lot of the images on your albums are, are very iconic images that you no. picked yourself. I mean, have you ever seen yourself as a British icon? No, not really, because you can't, uh, you can't arrange yourself into myth. It's something that happens accidentally. And once again, it's for others to determine. You can't simply appear on television and say, hello, I'm an icon. It's for other people to determine. And, um, so, so do you feel a bit strange about this campaign, then? I feel um, fascinated. By it. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very excited to have beaten so many people who, um, who are terribly famous. And I think I'm in the final three with two people whose careers are twice as long as mine. So um, it's, 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 a, it's amazing. So we've got Attenborough, McCartney yes. and Morrissey. Yes. What have you got that Attenborough and McCartney haven't got? I would say many things. I would say many things. I'm, I'm, at Attenborough, I'm not really sure what he does, really. And I don't even think he's vegetarian. <laughs> so, um... So I he's out then, he's up the window. Well, um, he has a very nice sounding voice. That's very, very true. But if he's carnivorous, and he refers to animals that are free as wild. But they're, but they're not wild, they're free. So he, he uses the term wildlife which is no good because it implies that animals uh, should be caged or things like that. Um, Paul McCartney is, I think, now treated as being the last remaining living beetle, which he isn't, but that's how he's regarded. And he was always certainly my favourite. So is he someone that you feel is iconic? I think he, he's, he's, he's done uh, some fantastic works. Crucially, I'm running your campaign. I'm in charge of the vote, Morrissey vote. Yes. We've got to get it up. We've got to get you to win. Yes. Are you better than that, Um What at? 
at being an icon. <laughs> well, yes, I am. Yes, I am definitely. But you know, I don't want to be. I don't want to be spiteful and nasty, and uh, I don't want to be electioneering, and I don't want to say horrible things about other people. But uh, but you're better. Well, if anybody has a spare vote <laughs> floating around, I'm saying you're better. I'm taking charge of this. Thank but, you. Um, Thank I'm you. your I'm your campaign manager. Thank but um, you. what is your proudest achievement? There's been just so many, really so many. And uh, there's been so many things that ha have astounded me, that have happened to me, obviously, um, because nothing was really planned. And um, it's, it's, it's always been against the grain, and th that makes it difficult, but more rewarding when you achieve something. It's easier to trot in line with everybody and smile at everybody and be pleasing and please the media all the time and so forth, but uh, I can't do that. Because you don't actually do a lot of interviews, do you? And um, we're quite lucky to get an interview with you. Um, but why is that? I mean, do you do you not like the way the media generally portrays you? No, I, I don't. I don't really. And a lot of uh, horrible things have been written about me. So if I can survive without it, I'll stay away. Mm -hmm. Really. And so you did this particular interview because it's a public vote. Yes, because it's a, a, a public vote, and 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 it is. Uh, I think it's extraordinary. You are a hero to loads of people. I've met loads of people on the street today who, who say, mm. Morrissey, he's my hero, I'm definitely going to vote for him. Mm. Who are your heroes? Living, nobody. Dead, thousands. Sir John Betjeman, uh, I think he would be the, uh, my personal vote, maybe George Best. Uh, there's so many people. But living, I think we live in um, not terribly sophisticated times. And... Uh, so at the moment for me that there's nobody that I, I, I would be in, insane about, really. So if you had to vote in this competition yourself, mm -hmm. basically it would just be you? Well, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is fair. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely fair. That's very good. I, but, might, I might use a different name though, won't I? Oh, really? Yeah, well, yes. You could vote under lots of different names. Exactly. Get different but, mobile phones. Exactly. And text in from you, You're numbers. giving me ideas now. There we go. But you, you've got to vote for yourself, you know. Yes. It's important. Yes, it is, but I don't have a mobile phone. You can email. Oh, uh, well, I see. Okay. But on your last album, there's mm. a track called I'll Never Be Anybody's Hero Now. Yes. And you are a hero to loads of people. Mm. How does it feel? It's um, a bit mind-numbing, really. A bit mind-numbing. But in a nice way? Or of course, it? yes. Because you must have people come up to you all the time and go, not only are you an icon, but I, mm. I love you, you're my hero, I, yes. I name my children after you. Yes, kind of it's very true. And it's fascinating because it implies that you're part of their life forever. And even if they go off you eventually, you'll always sort of stay in their heart somewhere. Because it's, it's almost as if we've been through a certain period together that is unforgettable. And that's, that's music frees people and it unifies people and that's what's so incredible about it. Music is like every single art form just piling together and <laughs> rather than just slapping paint on a canvas or doing a novel privately. Singing is <laughs> the full explosion of emotion. It was interesting to see how many singer-songwriters, uh, how many musicians were in the final top ten. Yeah. And I think there is something about music that's really, really powerful. It, yeah. it, people remember those times when they heard your songs and they, mm. they feel really emotional about yes, it. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. But music is a very personal thing and, it's a, and it does free people, at least mentally. They hear music and they, they believe that they're free and they believe that anything's possible and uh, of course it isn't. But uh, that's the power of music. And I think... I think when you first started, you articulated things that, that people were feeling and that nobody else had really done that before, maybe. You, you articulated you know, the aspects of love and sadness mm. and anguish, all those kind of things about growing up that yes. previously had just been a kind of um, you know, a, a fake r idea of romantic love, and you were talking about real love. I think it was a matter, really, of being very direct with people and assuming that the, the pop audience was intellectual which uh, not many people do. I think there's a grand assumption that people who listen to pop music and rock music are just blithering idiots and they'll take anything and any old rubbish. Do you think a lot of pop talks down to people then? Absolutely, yes. Radio does. It, radio sounds as if it's completely designed for children and, everybody sh and everyone is shouting, shouting at children, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I think it's, it's very off-putting because uh, people are... Uh, not as uh, simplistic as one might think. 
You sound quite disillusioned with aspects of uh, culture at the moment, but... Well, should I not be? Uh, but are you fighting your corner, do you feel? Oh, of course. Well, I'm here. And I'm singing tonight and so forth. And um, so, yes. Uh, I'm, I feel inexhaustible. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.